Hello! Welcome to the stream, second time around. Um, I saw that people have these things, they start like five minutes before the stream goes live, where they have countdowns and it's all um, clever video effects and things that they've done in After Effects or whatever. And I suck at all that kind of stuff. I have the artistic ability of a, a sea snail. But I am good at writing console applications. So I wrote a console application to do my intro thing. Um, and I, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, yeah, I used uh, spectre.console, which is a NuGet package for doing kind of progress bars and widgets and tables and all sorts of mad stuff in console applications. Um, and you can find that there. Um, I'll copy it into the chat just... There we go. Um, yeah, uh, I'll probably stick the, the source code for it on, on GitHub at some point. Um, but yeah, it's it's really simple. This is this is the whole thing. Um, and yeah, it just does kind of rainbow colours and different things. And then um, the bit that actually does the um, progress bars and, and everything else is just here. Um, I think that's quite effective. And then I found some free music um, that you can stick on your thing and you just have to, to attribute it. So, yes, um, that's fun and good. And I like that. Um, in other news, my boiler broke. <laughs> um, so my house, I live in uh, the UK. Um, it's very, very cold. Um, I'm hoping that streaming will cause my fans to spin up and, and maybe heat the room a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, that explains why I am not, um, uh, I might be looking a little bit the worse for wear because I did not manage to have a shower this morning. Fortunately, you can't smell me over the internet, so that's all all right. Okay, um, so if this, if you're new to the stream and you don't know what's going on here, um, the idea that I had and that I am working through is that uh, there's a whole bunch of websites out there in ASP.NET Web Forms or ASP.NET MVC 5 or whatever, um, and it's difficult to migrate these things to modern web standards like ASP.NET Core MVC or Blazor or whatever that might be. But Microsoft and the people on the .NET team made their own kind of reverse proxy thing and it sits inside an ASP.NET Core web application and it just acts as a reverse proxy to another website and I thought can you put MVC controllers or, or whatever in there and get that to work with um, with reverse proxy and so if you put them in front uh, of your um, reverse proxy call um, in your endpoints like this here. So we've got a map controller route and then we've got map reverse proxy. And these things run in order, endpoints run in order. So if an earlier endpoint says, hey, I know how to deal with that and um, sends a response, then the, the pipeline stops. And so you can put something in the way and then it gets picked up um, or it just goes through to the reverse proxy, which sends it on to another website. And this is the website that I'm using to, to try this out with. And so you can see here, this is localhost 24019. And this is just running in uh, Visual Studio. This is a, it's a .NET 4.5 um, ASP.NET Web Forms application. And uh, if I run the, um, the .NET application, if I do .NET run here, this is the facade that we created on Tuesday that sits in front of the application. And so now if I go to HTTPS localhost 5001, this just proxies through. But this is not, um, this hasn't proxied through. This is actually a replacement for the index page that we made and we copied the bootstrap things across so it looks roughly the same. And then we copied across the uh, the links, the categories here. Um, and all this is being done um, from the home controller 
in our new application and uh, we copied the site.master from the old web forms application and we basically dumped it into a new um, MVC application and turned it into uh, into the layout base page for for everything and it's it's generally worked quite well so far um, so the next thing we have to get to is if I go to products here um, you can see up at the top we've got this cart zero and if I add my old time car to a cart then it takes me to a shopping cart page and you can see the link up at the top here becomes cart one and in order to do that the if I want that to show up on my um, front page and on all the pages then I need a way to talk to the shopping cart and the shopping cart provider um, in the uh, ASP.NET application, the web forms application, uses session. Um, so if I just find this quickly, uh, so where are you? So yeah, we've got a few things that are in uh, session here. We've got like a payer ID and a current order ID, um, and uh, there's a cart ID in there somewhere cart session key here so shopping cart actions um, so this cart session key here which is just cart ID so uh, to get to talk to the cart um, data I need the cart session key which is held in session and I can, it's difficult to share session particularly with this web forms application because it's just in proc it's not using the SQL server session provider or any of the other kind of shared session providers it's just doing it in proc and people have custom session providers and all this sort of stuff's going on and so my idea here is to add an endpoint to the web forms application um, that gives access to its session which will allow you to get session values and set session values over an HTTP API and then to have a session system uh, provider inside my core application that is able to talk to that. And so at the end of Tuesday, we'd managed to create um, an HTTP handler. Um, if you haven't done ASP.NET uh, full framework for a while, you may have forgotten about HTTP handlers and modules and so forth, but they're still there. Um, and so this just, uh, you get the code coming in, um, the request coming in, and you can get the key through there like that. And if I go back to here and I go to, um, uh, what did I call it, facade session, facade session key equals cart ID. And that does actually come through there. And that's been encoded using um, message pack. And uh, I thought about using binary formatter and it would technically work. Um, binary formatter does exist in .NET Core. It's in .NET 5, but they are talking about deprecating it. Microsoft do not like binary formatter and they don't want you to use it. So what I need to do next and what we're gonna do first today is create a consumer for that inside our um, .NET Core application. And so I'm going to create a directory in here and call it services. And then I'm going to create a class in here and call it facade session. Um, and don't ask me that again, Ryder. I never say yes every time you ask. So our facade session is going to talk through to our um, back-end server to get a value out of there. And uh, it's doing it over HTTP, so we're going to make this asynchronous. Um, so we are going to have a public async task of t um, get async string key. and import the missing references here and we need the T here like that. Um, so this is going to talk through to our back end which is running on 
uh, HTTP localhost. Two four zero one nine. So I'm just going to stick this in here for for the time being. Private const string um, base address equals HTTP colons. I've actually start. Oh no, it's already got the HTTP in there. <clears throat> you can never tell with copying and pasting um, these things now whether that's actually going to do that. Dylan, thank you very much. Dylan's just raided me with a party of five people. Um, and PogChamp. Um, we're still allowed to PogChamp. That's awesome. Because um, the PogChamp... <laughs> there was a whole thing today about the PogChamp emote, and apparently the guy whose picture was in the PogChamp emote um, turned out to be a dick. And so now we're not allowed to use that emote anymore. I am a 48-year-old... I'm nearly a 48-year-old man. And I have no idea what PogChamp is. It's a Twitch thing. Yes, PogChamp is cancelled. Because it's based on a person who has turned out to be a problem. Um, he he was on the side of the, the bad people from yesterday that we're not going to talk about because this is not a political channel. And when the world is falling apart, what can you really do except make more software? That's what I do. Okay, so we are going to do this, and um, we're going to. We'll just inject an HTTP. We'll just create an HTTP client for now. So we'll say var client equals new HTTP client base address equals base address, and that needs to be a new URI. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to uh, say client dot uh, equals await client dot get async um, and we're just going to put question mark key equals put a dollar there because we can use that um, key and then we can say um, if uh, not response dot is success status code will just return default um, and then we can say uh, so over on the other side where we're doing this we're basically saying message pack serializer. So we're using message pack um, instead of binary formatter. And message pack does have this contractless standard resolver um, that should be able to serialize and deserialize things. Um, so this should now, uh, we need to install message pack into our facade code here. So let's look for message pack. Um, so this is <clears throat> uh, the noisy C um, Alexander thingy. I can't remember his second name. Um, message pack implementation. It's super fast, and uh, I really like it. Um, over on the web form side, we're actually using 1.9 point something of this because when I try to use the net standard version, um, .NET 4.5 does not like net standard. It really hates it, um, and so uh, I ended up spending about half an hour of Tuesday's stream just ripping stuff out and trying to revert back and go, no, 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 I want to go back to being .NET 4.5, forget I tried the .NET 4.7.2 and, and whatever. Um, but theoretically, I mean, message pack is a standard, and so it shouldn't matter that I'm using 1.9 on one side and 2.2.85 one, and on the other side. That should be okay, so I'm just going to install that in there. should be super fast on this side. Um, and then we can say uh, response dot um, content dot. Let's just dump it into a byte array, so we can say var bytes equals um, response dot content dot read as byte array async. 
and we can weight that like so. Um, and then we can say message pack serializer dot deserialize T. Don't know if this will work. Um, bytes and message pack contract. Contractless standard resolver typeless contractless standard resolver dot options. And then we can just return value. Okay, now this isn't going to work out of the box like this and it's probably not going to work when I try and do this deserialize thing and I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, but uh, what are we going to do? Um, so yes, here we have uh, wingtip toys default and this is running against um, ASP.NET. Um, Hey, Hannes, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, yes, uh, I'm just um, I'm still very new at this. Need to get used to looking at chat and talking to people and saying hi. Oh, by the way, I meant to say um, that intro thing with the uh, the sort of seven things that tick down on the console based um, intro page. Uh, if you can think of funny things that could be happening while a stream's being um, set and, and getting ready, then drop them in the chat. And if I like them, then I'll stick them in the source code for the intro thing and then they might show up and that, that would be fun. So yeah, um, stick those in there. Um, interactive intro screens, that's what we like. Um, I should probably create an API to do it and then people could put rude things in there. But yes, okay, so let's look at um, the uh, dev tools for this. And if we look at application cookies for um, localhost 2049, you can see we've got an ASP.NET underscore session ID and this anti excess RF token. But this cookie here um, is what is being used in the Webforms application to, um, to handle the session and, and grabbing the value out of the session and everything else. Um, if we go to localhost uh, facade here, this is just being proxied straight through, which means that the uh, all the cookies that come in with a request are being sent through to the backend application. But if I open up the um, cookies for here, you can see that we've got an ASP.NET session ID set in there as well. Um, but that's not going to automatically get passed through by this HTTP client um, code that I've got in my session provider. So um, it's ASP.NET underscore session ID. So I'm going to get the um, HTTP context injected into this um, class here. So I'm going to private read only HTTP context um, and I believe this should be um, injectable. And then in here, um, we're going to say client. We're going to have to create a request. Um, so client.send async. So we'll say var request equals new HTTP request message. Excuse me. <coughs> 
Oh dear. And this is going to be an HTTP method dot get, and we can just copy this from down here up to here. And then um, we need to set a uh, cookie on this request. So um, if we've got our underscore context dot request dot cookies dot try get value and we'll have asp.net underscore session id comma out bar session id like so um and we can just put an f around there like that um let's make you go away for a second and probably that as well there we go that's nicer um so yeah, if we can get that session ID out of our request cookies that have come in, um, which I think we should be able to, should we? Uh, yeah, no, those were definitely showing as under the localhost 5001. So I think we're good there. And then we can say request dot, uh, how do you set cookies on a request? Hmm. Um, HTTP request message. Cookies. How do I set a cookie on an H? Um, oh, it's it's you need a handler, right? Okay. We can do that nice and easily. Um, so then we can say uh, bar handler equals new HTTP client handler. How did they do that? Um, so we can say var cookie container equals new cookie container. Do shout out if there's a better way of doing this. And yes, request.headers cookie. That's probably easier, actually, isn't it? Um, if I could figure that out. I'll do this for the time being. Um, the intro code is on GitHub, yes. So everything that's been done so far, um, DeepN2000, is uh, on GitHub. Um, there's supposed to be a thing, there's supposed to be a stream elements bot that's kind of tweeting that sort of stuff. But um, let's... Uh, jump across. So we go to HTTPS github.com slash visual recode slash facade. There you go. This is the um, that's the link to where the code is on GitHub, so you can go and muck about with that. Um, so cooking container, uh, we'll put that in there, and then we'll say cookie container equals cookie container, and then we'll just pass our handler in here, and then we can say um, cookie container dot add and we'll put um, new cookie and the name is going to be asp.net underscore session id and the value is going to be session id like that um, and then we can just instead of doing that we say send async and our request like so okay so in theory this should take the um, value that's come from ASP.NET underscore session ID and it should um, pass it through 
and then we should still get the same thing back. So to test this, I'm going to create um, an endpoint on our controller here, and we'll say um, HTTP get um, hack and public async task uh, string get hack um, and then we're going to have our facade sessions going to be injected so I'm going to say private read only facade session underscore facade session and we can initialize that field from our constructor and then when we do get hack um, and is, is it it's still so that it's the best practice to have a single static injected HTTP client or have they find so what I will do um, as I kind of polish this up um, there you go there's a bot hey my bots are working I have bots um, there's HTTP client factory, you know, actually you can register named HTTP clients or um, you could uh, have the HTTP client injected into this. Um, and uh, once I get this thing set up properly, I will do that. Um, and we can look at how you, uh, you set up HTTP client things, but I'm just testing this through to get it working at the moment. And then we can look at, at polishing that sort of stuff up. So we're going to have uh, services dot add scoped and facade session like so. Um, so that's pulling. Uh, we need it scoped. So this can't be singleton because it is using something from each HTTP context. Um, if you actually if you try and register a singleton that has a scoped an existing scoped dependency, um, then it'll throw and it'll it'll cause an error at the start of the thing. Um, so this is we're going to have a, an instance of these for each request that comes in, which works perfectly well. Um, and then in here we can just say var cart id equals await um, underscore facade session dot get async string cart id and then we can just return cart id like so okay where's me thing that's running this um, let's change this to do dot net watch run um, so this will uh, some services are not able to unable to resolve service for type http context um, Okay, fine. Uh, um, so services dot add uh, HTTP context accessor so um, if you're a, a an old school web forms developer and um, you wanted to get the current HTTP context HTTP context had a static property current and it would just give you the, the HTTP context for the current request and you could do that all over your code um, which was very useful but but not necessarily great, and, and we don't like static things, and it's not good for testing and so forth. So in ASP.NET Core, which is much more, I mean, dependency injection is built in out of the out of the box, but also um, the uh, it's got much more of an emphasis on testing. It's much more um, about being able to mock things and and create things and, and everything else. And so they don't like static members. They don't like things like HTTP context or current or thread static. Uh, that's my phone ringing. Hang on, I'm just going to put my phone onto silent. Um, so there we go. So yeah, 
Um, so now, instead, in ASP.NET Core, we have this thing called HTTP Context Accessor, which we can get injected um, into our code here. So uh, we can get IHTTP Context Accessor. And we can initialize that from the constructor, and we can get rid of that and that. And then here we can say var context equals dot HTTP context. Um, and that, uh, that actually has an interesting side effect because now um, this is a singleton. Um, and so I could technically register facade session as a singleton. But as I build this out, one of the things I'm going to do is, is build caching into this, um, this session provider so that uh, it only has to go off and get the thing once. Because I know a lot of people, they don't copy session variables into their local thing. Um, they just get it repeatedly. Right. Um, so... Uh, we can go if context is null, um, throw new invalid operation exception no context. <coughs> okay. And if we go back to here, this is building. And that is now... Uh, working there. So if I go back to my facade here and I just go back to there, uh, if we go to products, you can see that cart zero. So we'll do add to cart to make sure it's actually got a cart ID. Um, and then we are going to um, go to hack and parameter cookie.domain cannot be an empty string. Where is cookie.domain being an empty string? Uh, let's just HTTP cookie header. So cookie colon space name equals value. Well, let's just try doing that, shall we? Um, what does our cookie look like here? Is there anything funky in there? No, it is just normal stuff. I'm just going to switch to doing that. Um, so... We'll take this out here um, and we will just say request dot headers dot add cookie and it's going to be dollar um, asp dot net underscore session ID equals session ID. And, oh, look, that's worked now. Um, fantastic. And, and it automatically refreshes when I go to the page. Um, that's nice. So if we go and check that, so that's 0208. Um, and uh, that's not... Uh, I don't know how to actually go and check what that thing is, but I'm guessing that is the right value. Um, which means the thing it's, it's definitely a GUID. What are the chances that this is going to return a valid GUID if I have actually messed this thing up? Um, I think those chances are fairly slim. Awesome. So now we have this, we've got this facade session thing. 
and so now I can actually um, implement the cart thing on my ASP.NET Core side. Which is really nice. Um, so, uh, let's take a look at how the cart code works in here. Um, so our shopping cart actions, we've got get cart ID, which works like that. Um, we've got get cart, uh, so we've got a db.shopping cart items. And if we go over to there, so this is entity framework inside the uh, ASP.NET Web Forms application. Um, and here we've got uh, the cart item class. Now in my go away dev tools, um, in the ASP.NET Core application, obviously we're using Entity Framework Core, um, using Entity Framework Core 5.0. Uh, because this is reasonably simple, um, I seem to be able to just copy classes across. And so if I go into my wingtip toys context here, um, let's start breaking these up into separate things. But in theory, if I put my cart item in there like that, and then in my wingtip toys context, um, Let's move category out as well. Move that to category.cs. Um, and my context. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have a public DB set cart item, shopping cart items, and get set on that. And so now, if I go into here and I can create another thing and I'm just going to call this shopping cart. So this is going to be my shopping cart service and we're going to get um, our facade session injected into here and we can just call this session because we don't care about anything else and we'll initialize that from the constructor um, and we can also get our DB context injected because in startup we've got add DB context pull and so this creates a pool um, of sort of persistent connected uh, entity framework core database contexts. Um, and it just manages all that for us. And that's talking to the same local DB file that the web forms application is using. So I can just get this context injected into my um, shopping cart as well. Um, so I can say private uh, underscore context. Let's just change that to DB. Um, and we can initialize that field from the constructor. And then at the moment, all we want is the count. And so we can say uh, public async task int um, get count async. And so in our shopping cart actions here, we've got this where cart item dot cart ID equals shopping cart ID and get that out like that. And so here we can say var cart ID equals await session dot get async uh, string cart ID. And once we've got that, we can go to our DB and we can say var count equals await underscore DB dot shopping cart items dot where item to item dot cart ID equals cart ID dot count async. Entity Framework Call's got some really nice stuff in it. Um, so by saying count async, that actually changes the SQL that gets run. Um, so it won't do the select, it won't have to build the result set. It's, it's basically doing select count uh, star from shopping cart items where, um, and then it runs asynchronously because 
everything should be async um, because if we're going to take a while going off to a database and doing this then why are we hanging on to a thread threads are a finite resource and then we can just say return count like that so now we have a shopping cart class and we can go and uh, we can add this as scoped as well so add scoped um, shopping cart so we can get that injected into places as well and now so if you look at the um, wingtip toys this is a link and it's positioned on the bar here and if we go and look at what's doing that um, in the site.master in wingtip toys hello are you working maybe it won't show it there we go site.master um, so somewhere up at the top here we've got this uh, cart count and this runs at the server I have no idea how this is doing this but that's obviously going off and getting a cart count from somewhere and what I need to do is have something that will do that in my um, in my top bar there so I'm going to create a tag helper because this is ASP.NET Core Razor and tag helpers are completely brilliant um, so we're going to say add a directory again and we'll call this tag helpers um, and then in here I can create a new class and call this cart link tag helper like so and um, so a tag helper, if you're not familiar with ASP.NET Core, this actually allows you to define your own tags um, in the same way as in sort of React or Angular or Svelte or any of these fancy modern JavaScript frameworks. You can go, there's, there's now an HTML tag called this. Um, in, uh, in Razor, you can define tag helpers that allow you to create your own elements, element types, and then drop them into your razor and they will be rendered like this. And they're very, very simple to create. And we have uh, process async. So this um, is where we uh, essentially construct the HTML. So this is gonna get passed in uh, a cart link. And somewhere I had a page open that tells me how to do this um, so it was on here we go author tag helpers in ASP.NET Core um, so a minimal tag helper looks like this so you've got uh, you've got your own sort of name here and then the server your tag helper code turns this into um, this code here and so you've got this process thing so you change the output tag name from cart link to a so we can do that we can say um, output dot tag name equals a um, and then uh, we can um, <clears throat> theoretically attributes will just get passed across and so if I specify an href um, on this tag then that will just uh, go through there like that. Um, so I'm going to make this async. Um, now I need to get the shopping cart in here. So I've got my um, tag helper context, which has uh, Do, 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 do. somewhere in here I should be able to get something so override um, in it context dot uh, let's go back to 
our code here. So razor tag helpers dependency injection. So process async, we get the context there. Um, do 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 do. Uh, does anyone know? If anyone knows how to do this, please do shout out in the chat. That would be super helpful. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Kenny Torder's blog, creating a service to inject, modifying the tag helper. Um, apparently it just does it using dependency injection and I don't have to worry about it. That's super awesome. Um, so let's just do that then. We'll just in here, we'll take that out and we'll say private read only um, shopping cart underscore shopping cart and we can initialize that field from the constructor and we can say output dot content so we can say var count equals await underscore shopping cart dot get count async um, and that returns default so that'll just be zero uh, so we can just make this dollar cart using string interpolation, which is lovely. Um, count output dot content How do you set the content? No, not you. Author tag helpers. Um, output dot content dot set content. Uh, so we're just going to do that like that. So output dot content dot set content. Excellent. Um, Theoret. I think that's all I need to do here. Um, and I think then in my uh, in my layout code where I've got my um, code up at the top. So here we've got this, um, we can take these run at servers out because um, I don't need those anymore. There is no run at server um, in uh, in Razor in ASP.NET Core. That's That's a web forms thing. Um, but I should now be able to say, oh, hang on, if I go up to the top here um, and I can say at using uh, facade dot tag helpers to bring that in there. And then down here, instead of having a, an A, I can say cart link um, like that, uh, href equals tilde slash shopping cart like so and uh, I'll just comment that out for the time being. Okay, in theory um, this should give me a massive exception and let me know what I've done wrong and need to go back and look at. 
So here we go. Let's go to uh, localhost 5001. And we can go into cars. And that page isn't working because I stopped the ASP.NET application. And let's go back to here again. Cannot drop database wingtip toys blah 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 because it is currently in use. Um, why would that be doing that? And did we? Ha I have a vague memory of this happening on Tuesday and me going, "Why are you doing that?" And just so uh, let's do that and I'll see if I can find if there's an IIS Express that's kept running. No, okay, I don't think there has. Um, so that is running up there. Uh, We will see. Cannot drop database because it is in use. Oh, okay. So I know what this is. Um, I'm going to have to stop this. And then I'm going to have to start this. This is spectacularly um, annoying. Okay, so that's working now, and then I can go back into here and do dot night watch run, and then we can go back to our facade here. Right. Okay, there we go. Um, and so we have got our product list, contact, everything else. Um, cart link is not showing up in there um, and I'm not entirely sure why let's take a look in here and if we go to uh, this element here and my cart link um, tag helper you can see here has not been replaced and I have no idea why so let's drop into here and I will say run um, attach to process uh, and that is what we want to attach to and I can go to cart link tag helper and if we go back to here and we do a refresh and that is not getting hit I've done something wrong with my tag helpers somebody explain to me the point of tag helpers uh, there we go So, HTML target element attributes. So 
so authoring to add a tag helper to a view using a fully qualified name introduction to tag helpers oh there's something you have to do in your add tag helper star from authoring tag helpers so if we go back to our project here um, and we can stop that and if we go to our view imports and we can do and this I think is the assembly name so I should just be able to do that um, and then this restarts and then if we go back to here and refresh this let's do some hard refreshes network disable cache you can go up there for a bit. And it's still not happy. Why is it still not happy? The code above uses the wildcard syntax asterisk to specify that all tag helpers in the thing specifies the tag helpers to load. Hoo -ah. um, it's it's just been too long. Um, that's the problem. Uh, let's try going back to here. Uh, what's in our using? So we'll say at using facade dot tag helpers. And then we'll put that there. And then in our layout.cshtml, um, we can take that out like that. Um, and if we go, cart, see that should be giving me IntelliSense for, for cart link. It really should. Um, let's do a, a build. run this from inside Rider for a change. Oh, I've got my elements here. Oh, I've got my ally. So this cart link is it's just not having it. It is just not running. Um, and I can go back into here and I can find my cart link tag. Oh, I wonder if it's because I'm deriving from component and not tag helper. Um, sources are modified. Changes will be applied on the next step or resume. So we can apply changes. Uh, no, we can't. We're going to have to stop and restart. And then we can bounce. This is now... Hey, look at that. Um, and so we have... Uh, an exception has been thrown. An error occurred while sending the request unable to read data from the transport connection, existing connection was forcibly closed by the remote host. Ah, I wonder what happened there. Um, but that's something. So if I just stop this again, um, and I can say split variable declaration, and then we can 
uh, wrap this with an exception handler and we'll just say catch uh, count equals zero and do nothing with that. And so that should make our application run properly at least. Um, let's get rid of that there and we will run this and that is going to open that page up there. This appears to be stressing out at me. Uh, let's try refreshing this. There we go. Oh, we've got our cart zero. Our tag helper is working. We have a working tag helper. That's it. We can take the rest of the week off. Um, so now what we need to do is uh, to figure out so um, what's causing that to uh, choke. Um, something is going seriously wrong here. There's our product list and we can add that to a cart. That's showing cart one there, which is fine because this is the, the back end server. If I go through to here, then we can try and figure out why this um, value here is not working and what's going on there. Um, so I'm going to set a breakpoint on here. Um, and I'm going to uh, set a breakpoint. Let's go into the shopping cart get count async. And we'll set a breakpoint on there as well. And then we can go back to here and we can just do a refresh. And that's going to do that. And then this triggers our breakpoint in our web forms application. Um, and so our value there, there we go, we've got a value and we've got our uh, bytes which have come through here, we've got a 38 byte thing and if we do context.response.flush and we carry on with that um, and so we have our cart ID, our cart ID has come back across and so we can just go babumph and that is for some reason um, not set to anything. But that should be set to something. So why is that not returning a value back there? Um, why is that cart ID not working? If I go back to my um, Visual Studio thing and I go to View uh, Server Explorer so I can go and look in the actual database that we're using for this and see what's going on. Come on. You know you want to. Wingtip toys. Uh, tables. Cart items. Um... Show table data. Okay, so here we've got our um, our item there, um, which is DBB seven nine two F one. And if we go back to our thing here, we've got DBB792F1. Yeah. Um, so that should be working. Um, why is that not working? Uh, 
it's not throwing. I mean, it's it's returning zero. So it's gone to the database and it's done the query. It's just coming back with it as zero. And I don't understand why it's doing that. Um, let's just stretch that across. So ends in 884D. That ends in 884D. Shopping cart actions. Um, so that is oh, okay we've got the quantity it should still be returning one though that should still be saying hello I've I found some things um, Let's just, if we stop this like this, and we say dot select um, item to item dot quantity um, dot sum async. So that's now getting the quantity back, and if we uh, go back to our thing here and we run this, Okay, um, so if we go to products here, uh, figure out what this is doing. Come on, what are you doing? About? Cannot drop is wanting to drop the database again. Why does it want to drop the database every time? Okay, so stop this. I'm going to have to figure out a better way of handling this because this is going to get very, very annoying. Nobody's going to want to work with this kind of approach. Um, I mean, is it trying to? Is it got a migration built in here somewhere? Is it somewhere in App Start that it's doing a database migration that I can? drop into and do something or is it just trying to recreate it every single time what's happening in global.asax root code database.set initializer it's probably something to do with database.set initializer isn't it um Okay, so you're not running. So I should be able to, let's do a rebuild on here. And we can restart this here. And see what's going on. Oh, it might be this that's blocking it. <laughs> That'd be fun, wouldn't it, if it was... If it was me having it open in there that was causing the problem. Um, so, let's... We will not actually open like that. Let's 
try running you again. This is popping up on my screen up here on a Firefox browser to keep it separate from anything important. Come on, what are you doing? You are insisting on dropping this database, aren't you? Um, let's go to I'm just going to comment this out because I don't think we need a database initializer because there is a database already there um, and I think it's recreating it every single time and so I'm going to take that database.set initializer out and I'm just going to run it and we'll see how we get on with this because I think when it tries to run that cart query it's it's true yes okay that's worked now so we have um, that's gone through there like that so if I go back to here and we come through to there um, and that can go there um, and then we can go to products and then we can do add to cart and now that's put one thing in the cart and then we can go back to home and we're still getting cart zero coming through there and this is the bit where I'm starting to get really confused. Um, why are you not finding that? If I go back to there and we do a refresh. And we get our cart ID. And that's fine. That's there. But our count is coming through as zero. Um, okay, so let's stop this. And we'll say uh, var debug equals await underscore db dot shopping cart items dot to list async. And we will. set our breakpoint here and we'll rerun this okay let's stick it on there um, So this cart's got one in it. If I go back to here, then we say debug. So this should get us all the things. Invalid object name shopping cart items. Ah, that's different then, isn't it? Okay, what's going on there? Um, wingtip toys. So if I go to my... Uh, is it an app? Where do you hide these things? Um, models, cart item, and that's referenced from our product context there. Um, I'm just going to go over here and I'm just going to change the name of this so it matches the name of the table in the database and see if that makes any difference. It's possible that it, um, Entity Framework Core does its table name resolution differently. And so we'll try running this like so. Uh, 
Um, so we can hit that. And right, okay, so yes, it was that. Um, I I'd, I'd copied the name across, but I think, I'm guessing Entity Framework Core takes the name of the table from the property in the DB context, whereas um, Entity Framework, whatever it's using, Entity Framework 5 or 6 in the Web Forms application, um, was taking it from the... Uh, the class name um, and so here now we have our account is going across like that um, and in theory uh, I'm going to set a breakpoint here instead of here and here um, and then I'm going to go back to my home page here and I'm going to do a refresh Count is one. Hurrah! That, um, I'm actually super pleased with this. Um, so, <laughs> uh, this is, this is fairly cool. Um, this is a bit of my background. That's my door. You shouldn't be able to see that, but you can. Um, so I need to figure out how to get that to disappear for the next time I stream. But no, so this, this is, um, this is an ASP.NET Core MVC page, just a standard Razor page. Um, and it's proxying pages through to, uh, a web forms application that's running in the background, but now they are sharing session state. Um, and so when I go back to home here, uh, we can take this breakpoint out now. Um, and so this, this is a tag helper in an ASP.NET Core application, but in order to execute, it's had to talk to the session um, sitting in an ASP.NET Web Forms thing. And it's in proc session. It's not like I haven't just written a session provider so that it can talk to... Um, the same session provider as the back end and i think obviously for for a lot of situations that would be a way to go and that's something that i would explore if i was sort of building this out as a as an actual um project but for an out of the box quick and dirty thing that does do the job i think this is pretty cool i think passing that session key over um so getting it out of the request cookies coming in and making sure we pass it when we access the session on the back end server um, so that we can get session values out. There's a lot of polishing and stuff that can still be done here. And um, the idea with this is once we've got this working, and particularly once we've got the authentication working, which is what I want to look at on uh, a future stream, possibly get into it on the next stream. We'll see um, what makes sense to do. Um, but yes, once we've got everything working in this in this facade project, I want to rip these uh, these utility things out, this session sharing and the authentication sharing, and publish a set of NuGet packages. Um, so one NuGet package for the back end server that um, includes the uh, HTTP handler um, and the the session. Uh, facade code and the auth facade code and then a separate NuGet package for the front end uh, for your new ASP.NET Core application um, that provides sort of facade session and whatever else and I don't know whether it's going to be called facade um, I will try and come up with a, a lovely clever name for it or if people want to suggest names in the chat here um, maybe we could have a competition who can who can name the NuGet package that would be cool um, but yes, this is this is awesome. Um, I have got this this shared session thing working. So um, we're about sort of five ten minutes from the end of the stream here. Um, I don't think it's particularly worth starting anything else today. Um, I have. Uh, uh, in theory, I'm planning on doing some streaming over the weekend, either on Saturday or Sunday. Um, please do drop me a message in the 
chat or ping me on Twitter um, and say sort of what times work well for you and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm going to do a, a git push with this. Now where's my um, code gone here? Let's drop back down to here and we can just do... Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just going to stop this running. I found that weird things can happen if you do commits while your code is running, um, particularly if you've got old code running in, in Visual Studio. Um, you sort of stop and then you exit like this and it goes, do you want to save changes? And you're like, I just did a commit. What have you changed? So let's get rid of both of those and then we'll cd dot dot slash dot dot. Um, and then we can say git add dot minus a and just make sure it's not going to add anything mad um yeah no that's all right uh git commit minus m day two day two in the big brother house um day two um front end is successfully accessing session in back end and we'll do that and then we'll do git push and again that's at github.com slash visual recode slash facade um, visual recode is my uh, product that is supposed to help people make, migrate from .NET 4 to .NET 3 .NET Core or .NET 5 or .NET 6 um, this is uh, what we're making here and what's eventually going to come out of this is going to be completely open source, MIT licensed, um, but it is being sort of uh, sponsored. So all this work is being sponsored by Visual Recode um, and by the, the company we've got behind that. So yeah, um, that was that was lots of fun. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, and... Uh, And that you'll join me again on the next stream and tell your friends about it. And what I really want at the moment, I want to get my um, follower count above 50 because then I get some sort of Twitch affiliate stuff and I can start giving people points. So if you haven't followed, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a follow um, and uh, that would be very nice. Other than that, um, I'll announce on Twitter when I'm going to be streaming over the weekend uh, and we'll take a look at uh, sharing authentication and potentially uh, moving admin pages across and that sort of thing. Um, and it will be lots of fun. So nobody online that I can see. Um, thanks for the follow, Banjax. That's awesome. Really appreciate it. Um, but yes. Uh, I can't see anybody online who we can go raiding, and so I will just leave you guys to enjoy the rest of your evening or day or morning, depending where you are in the world. Thanks very much, and I will see you next time. <laughs>